So the intro song, I made it two videos because it's, um, we better off to make it two videos anyway. So, the root cause of the addiction that you guys, everyone out there that isn't addicted to anybody, believes that isn't anybody, because I believe every human being is addicted to money, first, first and foremost. And that's the most addictive and, and, and dangerous and, and, and harmful drug, money. But for those that point fingers at, at people that use uh, control, what they consider controlled substances, they're controlled by what? By who? They're controlled by a, a government that, that doesn't understand who they are and what they are, they don't care. They just want to make them into like these droids that go to work every day. So, I want to make it clear that money is the root cause of addiction. It's not the plant, it's not the substance, it's not even the person that provides it. It's the fact that money is to be made on that person being an addict. And because that money is to be made from all, and don't just blame the, the people that are providing it to them, because all they're doing is providing something to them that helps them connect to their tribal past, which you as a society has ripped away from them. And they don't want to go to your bars and, and drink from Monday to Friday. It does, that's, not, that's not connecting them to a tribe. That, if anything, that, that's grounding them and making them work harder. Because alcohol was actually introduced into our civilization to ground us and to make us work for that, that system that enslaved us. So again, I want to repeat. The root cause of addiction is money. And this is how I'm going to prove it to you. If, if there was no money, there'd be no reason to make anything illegal, right? Because nobody would be profiting from it, and then, and then the government not being able to tax that profit. Number two, people wouldn't be roaming around places trying to find it, and then having to do God knows what to get it, all because it's illegal. And then jeopardize their freedom to do it. And the people making money off it, well they could just have little stands now that people can walk up and uh, instead of instead of having to worry about them getting spending time in jail for, for providing it to them. There's a purpose for each side of it in our society. It's to show you that that if there was no money, then there would be no addiction. Since there is money there's a possibility of, of profiting a great deal on that addict, from from the side of it of, of the dealer to the side of it of the of the uh, uh, you know uh, NAs and, and and all these institutions that are getting funding to to help people stop doing this thing, but none of them understand that the, the reason that they were doing it deep down inside because they're trying to connect to that trial past that you as a society have ripped away from. You. So money is the root cause of addiction. I'm going to tell you this story that happened to me when I was 17. Now, I, 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 like I said, I befriended a family of Colombians, and I, I, you know, I got to experience a lot of things. And I am a shaman, so I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm a, I've been a shaman for hundreds, if not, if not thousands of, of past lives um, <laughs> that I've been able to recall. And this life wasn't meant for that, and I wasn't that, you know, I'm, you know, this is, that was me uh, doing what I needed to do. As a human soul, this is what I need to do as an Arcturian soul. Um, when I was about 17, I think 16, 17, um, I used to, you know, do something uh, a little bit different than, than, than uh, well, something that you can buy in in, uh, in Jackson Heights, Queens, 90th Street. Um, and there was a few people that I was, one guy that I met that night, you know, just kind of chilling in the room. And I used to work with him right, in a little supermarket. Puerto Rican guy, forgot his name. And, uh, and he had two other people, I think two, one or two other people. You know? We started hanging out and we had a car and we were driving around for a while and then we ended up at a pool hall and 
you know, I never really played pool. My 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 dad left when I was five, and never got into sport. I, lived, I grew up in the city, so I, you know, I mean, you know, for some some touch football and whatever. But I never hockey. I mean, pool. I, we didn't have a pool table. In the we didn't have a basement, and and, and I didn't really I got a chance to play pool. But so it, they, they they took us to this, this place and we tried to play pool, and I was like not that good at it. And then afterwards, something really strange happened. Now we were running out of money, of course, you know. and, and we still wanted to stay up and do whatever. And uh, I found myself in the back of this car, and I start feeling there's a, there's a sense of like something's wrong. Something's wrong. So let's imagine two guys in the front of this little car, and one guy next to me. I believe it was two. Okay, three. I'm sitting in the back of this car, and he, 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 they pull up to this. Um, and I believe one guy was 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 gay. Um, he seemed kind of gay, but you know, whatever. I mean, but definitely the, the guy, the guy that I met, that wasn't. I mean, he's you know, he's a tough, tough kind of Puerto Rican guy. And I start realizing he got me at this place. In front of this, this this dealer's house, right? This dealer's apartment in in, uh, in Jackson Heights, and they start saying, you know, there's a guy up there that uh, if you you know if you do him some favors, um, you know he'll he'll give you some good amount of stuff. I'm like, what? At this point, I start realizing they brought me to that that, that pool hall to see how how masculine I was to be able to play pool, and then I know it's because and people don't understand me because I grew up. Um, in, in the U.S., I was five when I supposedly when I came. I don't know, that's what they tell me. But uh, but but I was I grew up mostly in the, in the United States, and I had my my American friends. And then I used to go to Italy, and hang with my, my cousins and my, my Italian friends there. And the difference was that the American friends were you know they were more like you know tough and you know, you're gay like, hey, hey buddy what the fuck hey, hey don't be touching me like that. My Italian friends and cousins were like oh ciao con questa è bello yeah, yeah. and they were all like you know. And you know we used to you know, grab you know and hold each other. I mean we're, it's 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 not a it's a it's a um, what do you call that? Uh, it, it, it's not anything other than like like being being open. And that's kind of the way I was. But I had to be both because I lived in both kind of places. But um, you know, I, I, but you know, seventeen or something. I was like portraying something more balanced <laughs> than most of my 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 friends and and any of the like like the sectors that I was growing up in. I got I had Italian friends, not that many, but I had uh, African American friends, I had Hispanic friends. Um, sometimes they make, sometimes they didn't. Most of the times they didn't. Um, so I'm sitting in the back of this car, and I didn't realize that I was telling you that these guys like set me up to the point where they thought they thought I was gay, and I thought they would they would be able to get me to fucking go up there and do this guy a favor. So cool. For, for the for the for the, the drug, I'm not gonna say what it is, but it's 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 a something that it wasn't exactly what you think it is. It's whatever. I might as well say it. it's something called bazooka, which is which is different than what they consider base uh, cocoa cocoa plant. Um, it's bazookas when they when they actually make the, the the they take the plant, they make it into that the stuff that you know they use. Um, the stuff that forms around the top of the, the um, the barrel or whatever that you know the, the pot you scrape that off put in the thing and and, it, and you can smoke it and and, and with marijuana or in a, in a pipe and stuff and it gives you an uh, like a, a you know a wake up kind of a thing um, when i started realizing i was sitting in the back of the seat i started like i pushed the seat i pushed back on the, on the back of the seat and i started kicking the guy who was driving, which is my side, kicking his seat, kicking his seat. I mean, he got me, give me the fuck out of here, give me the fuck out of here, you fucking assholes, give me the fuck out of here. I kept on kicking, kicking until he, he opened, and they all like looked at me like, oh shit, we made a mistake. I walked out of that that that, that car and I started walking for a while. I was like nervous and so I was just shaking. Now I, I, I had a little more money left in the bank, but I didn't tell them because they were like, you know, I was one of the you know few people that had money left. <laughs> Yeah, and then I would lay down. Like, you guys are not gonna convince me to use all my money. But that experience for me opened really opened my eyes to the fact that um, people will do anything for 
this and any any illegal drug because it is the but not because again I don't want to don't blame the substance don't blame the, the way it was made because it's been made like that for thousands of years in, in, in Colombia and Peru and it was used ceremonially and it was used for, by, 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 by the inhabitants there without any kind of like um, let's see finger, finger pointing or, or, or accusing right? here because it's illegal it's controlled by a, a sector of the, the, the public that you know has to charge a lot for it and it becomes very very costly and you lose everything if you let it you stop it at one point but you know. the thing of it is if you stop it then the only, the only other thing the only other thing you have you can do is like get a job in like McDonald's or something like that and just like you know live the rest of your life stay in way and once you touch the the, the, the side of it and, and, the, and the, the fact that it is uh, this thing that 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 um, pushes you away from what society is. I'm sorry, I'm going to tell the truth about this. And if people don't want their kids listening to it, don't, don't, don't let them listen to it. I'm telling you people the truth. Because this is what you've done. You've not just, you know, made, made uh, you know, people into addicts, uh, uh, labeling them addicts, but then you, 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 you blame the, 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 the people supplying it or the, or the planet itself that God put on this fucking planet. Uh, you blame that instead of blaming the real, th the real thing, which is the fact that, that there's money to be made. And if you remove money all, and you make all these things uh, not illegal anymore, because if there's no money, you don't worry about taxes and taxing people, and nobody would be like, what? You know? You just make it. Everybody can have a plan if, if they wanted it. And they can do, do it when they want to, and the way they want to. Without having to worry about somebody knocking on the door and putting them into a cage. I said this before. And I see, and you know, what happened tonight to me, I'm just gonna say, what happened to me 17 years ago, or no, not 17 years ago, when I was 17, <laughs> I think it was 17, yeah, I was 17. Um, what well, left an impression with me then. It was more of an angry thing. Now I look back and I understand. Because if there was no money, and if it was that, that thing was illegal, nobody would be doing that to each other. The fact that it is illegal makes people do that to each other. So instead of blaming the fact that it is illegal and the fact that, that it's money that is, is, is the root cause of it, you blame the person doing it. Like I saw the guy a couple of months, maybe even a year later, and I never saw him again after that. But in the street, I was like, "Yo, you remember what you did to me that night?" And we were like, he looked at me like, Yo, I, "I'm, I'm really sorry, bro. I'm, I'm really." And he really apologized to me. He was a big Puerto Rican guy. Could have, could have fucking like you know punched me in the face and walked away, man. But um, you know. So um, again, I I wanna, I wanna, I wanna just get. Anybody that actually listens to this really wants to listen to this and actually listens to this. I, I want it to go, get into your head the reality of the fact that, that that the fingers that you're pointing at these people that are that are persecuted for the things that help them connect to their tribal past. I want you to get the understanding that that, that um that persecution is caused by the fact that there's money and because it's illegal and because um, you've made it so and you've allowed those people to make it so. Well, I want to repeat again. Elon Musk can go to a fucking party and rave to a rave and take fucking ten hits of, uh, of ecstasy and say, hey, for the weekend and then get are going to go partially arrested or something and then get a whole bunch of lawyers to get them all free. Yeah. Fucking hypocrites, man. And that billionaire class? His class? They're the ones that are um, enslaving your children. So before you point your finger at anyone that does something that's helping them to break free from this matrix that you forced upon them, is slavery. Before you do that, you point your finger at all the billionaires. Because it's just like pointing at the slaves 
and saying, you guys don't want to be slaves, how dare you? Instead of pointing at the, 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 the slave master and saying, how dare you enslave human beings, uh, God's children. Good night. I don't know what to say after something like that. It's, you know, I, you know, just fucking think about it. Think about it, please. Enough is enough. Don't force your body. Oh, let's go and vote for this, uh, this politician, or, or let's do this, this amendment. Let's, let's just get rid of it all because it's all bullshit. It's all garbage. It's all to waste your fucking time. How long will it take for a law to be? Well, it takes forever for laws to be changed and amendments to be put in because they have to be like the, the, the justly, you know, you know, balanced for the wealthy. Make sure the wealthy are taken care of because everything, every law, everything that's that's written in all those fucking books, everything that they, the lawyers and judges and all those people follow, it's all to protect the rich from the poor. Because in tribal cultures, they didn't do that. And you know, you had a few strays. Don't get me wrong, but the times are much different than now. Well, while the minds were actually more advanced than us, uh, we have the technology um, that is limiting us from doing the things that they did. But at the same, time, at the same time, we could be doing what they did, enhancing it with the technology instead of replacing it. Because if we replace it, then we don't evolve, and the machines evolve and take over. If we use the knowledge that the minds had, and and then add technology to it that we understand, you know, it'll just help the ascension process. They didn't need technology because they had they had they had the ability to to to, to you know create dimensional portals that they just went back and forth from. That knowledge is not something for for, for you guys to have. You know why? Because you guys would go into those into those dimensions and try to conquer them, right? And nobody wants you to do that. Good luck.